Assalamualaikum and good day to all. We're going to continue with our lesson on reflected shock wave for our high-speed aerodynamics class. In this session, we're going to learn about the strategy to solve problems on shock waves that reflect off a wall in a straight cylindrical tube. Okay, so let's look at the problem of the reflected shock. What is the problem actually? Normally, the problem is about predicting all of the gas properties in the tube in all the gas regions across the shock before and after the shock reflection. In this picture, you have the initial scenario of a shock moving to the left inside the tube. In the standard cases, the original gas properties are known in the tube in region 1 before the shock passes through. And also in most cases, the shock velocity is known or can be experimentally measured. What is not known is the gas properties behind the shock in region 2. Well, this is actually the same problem as the moving shock problem and we've learned how to solve this problem in our previous video. To solve it, you basically have to convert the frame into the shock frame. From this new setting, you can solve the problem as a stationary shock problem. After solving this, we can get the values of the gas properties in region 2, including the velocity V2 prime and also V2. As the shock continues to move to the left, it's going to hit the wall at the end of the tube, as shown here. At the same time, it is carrying all the gas behind it, labeled as region 2, that is itself moving at some speed V2, but slower than the shock speed. After the shock hits the wall, it's going to be reflected off of it, and continue to move back into the tube in the opposite direction, i.e. towards the right. It's not going to continue to maintain the same speed U sub S as the shock speed before the reflection. It's going to have a different speed, but unknown at this point. So let's label this new shock speed after the reflection as U sub S R. As the reflected shock moves towards the right, it's going to face region 2 head on, with the gas in region 2 still continuing to move towards the left at the speed of V2. You can see that scenario in this picture here, which is shown in the original gas frame. After the flow in region 2 crosses the shock into region 3, the gas properties are going to change again. The pressure, temperature and density are going to increase, but we won't know these values yet. Also, the shock is going to sweep through the flow in region 2, such that the flow velocity is going to reduce after it crosses the shock. One thing we know about the gas in region 3 is that it should not be moving anywhere, i.e. V3 has to be zero. The reason is that there's a wall to the left, and the wall itself is fixed, not moving. So, the gas in region 3, which is next to the wall, must also be static because it simply cannot move to the left because it's blocked by the wall. And it also cannot move to the right because that will leave an empty vacuum between the gas and the wall. And that's not possible. So, to solve this problem, which is basically still a moving shock problem, where the shock is moving at a speed u sub s r, we need to change the frame into the shock frame. The new frame is shown here. The process of changing the velocities is still the same as before, where you label all the new prime velocities v3 prime and v2 r prime relative to the shock velocity u sub s r. V2 R prime is not the same as V2 prime because the new shock speed U sub S R is not the same with the shock speed before the reflection U sub S. V3 prime turns out to be identical to U sub S R because V3 is zero. So now we have set up our problem as a stationary shock problem. We should be able to solve this problem in its new setup using what we've learned previously. Now, let's look at the strategy to solve the problem in more detail. Here, we'll just focus on the problem after the reflection because we already know how to solve the problem before the reflection. In this slide, I'm going to highlight the unknown variables in blue. Those are the parameters that we need to find to complete this problem. In the original gas frame again, we can see that the unknowns are U sub S R, P3, and T3. After converting into the shock frame, we can see that the variables are rewritten as shown here on the right. 
The remaining unknowns are V3 prime, V2 R prime, M3 prime, and M2 R prime. Since we don't have any parameters that gives us any information about the strength of the shock, we cannot solve the problem directly. So, we have to resort to an indirect process. Fortunately, we've learned before that we can solve such a problem by using iterative method. That is, by guessing the shock strength and follow through our calculation to see if the final outcome of our calculation produces the same scenario as given in the problem. Specifically, we can guess a reasonable value for M2R prime and follow through our calculation of crossing the shock by calculating all the parameters highlighted here. Our final calculation will produce a value of V3. It should be zero as discussed before, but since we are just guessing a value for M2R prime, the V3 that we got out of our calculation may not be equal to zero. If it's not, we need to redo our guessing of M2R prime again. Essentially, we have to iteratively repeat the process until we get V3 close enough to zero within our tolerance. Once we have achieved that, all the parameters calculated within that final process are the solution to this problem. This whole process is similar to the ones discussed in our previous video, so I won't repeat the entire process of the iterative method in detail. Okay, let's recap the concepts we have learned in this session. We have a shock wave moving inside the tube towards the wall and reflects off the wall to move into the opposite direction. We can split the problem into two parts. Number one, before the reflection and number two, after the reflection. The problem before the reflection is essentially a standard moving shock problem that can be easily solved by converting the gas frame into the shock frame and solving it using the stationary shock concept. After the reflection, it is also a moving shock problem but has to be solved indirectly using an iterative process. So basically, that's the three big concepts we've learned here. Concept number one, change the moving shock problem into a stationary shock problem. Concept number two, solve the stationary shock problem and reconvert the frame and finally, concept number three, solve the indirect problem using the iterative method. Okay, that's all for now. Till next time, see you. Bye.